So you've heard that reading aloud to your child is a good thing to do. And perhaps you started that when they were little, but are you continuing on? Also, are you sure you're doing it the right way or the way that everybody's talking about? Stick around today. I'm going to help you understand what you can do when you're reading aloud to your child to help build your child's vocabulary and comprehension. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the ideas and resources you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. And today I'm talking about reading aloud with your child and I've got just the thing that's going to help you. We're going to go through my read aloud handy helper today. And if you like what you see, you can head on over to the parentteacherbridge.com store. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can get one of these that you can start using today uh, for yourself. But it's going to take you through some of these uh, strategies you can use when your child is uh, listening to a book that you're reading aloud, or maybe your child is reading aloud on their own, and you just want to engage your child in some conversation to help them think about what they are reading. If you haven't yet, go ahead and click like and subscribe so you can be notified each time I upload a new video for your child's education. All right, this is the Read Aloud Handy Helper from the Parent Teacher Bridge. So I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit. And if you like what you see, you can go to the link down below and grab a copy of one of these for yourself. So as we read any book, we know that there are three different sections, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So let's look at this beginning section. This, these are some things that you can do with your child when you sit down to read at the very beginning. You can point out what a title uh, of the book is, the cover, maybe predict from the picture what they think it's going to be like, maybe talk about how you can't judge a book by its cover, whatever it may be. You can also uh, look into using words like author and illustrator uh, to help connect your young reader to some of the talents that these people have displayed. Maybe your child has already read a book by that same author. Maybe your child chose the book because of the wonderful work of the illustrator, but you can point out these words, author, illustrator. You can also look on the back. There's a summary there of what the book is about that tries to entice the reader. Compare it to a movie. When you have a movie preview come out, you know you're going to see parts of the movie. You know you're going to find out some details about the movie, but not everything. That is what it's like on the back cover of a book. And this can be used to help show your child how they can choose books on their own that they think they may like to read. Maybe the cover grabs their attention first, then you flip it over on the back, and then they read more to see if it interests them. All right, and then finally, as you open the book, there may be a table of contents. If it's a chapter book, it's gonna list the chapter titles, but also if it's a nonfiction book, you may have uh, some, may have a table of contents there also, and you can let them know, hey, if it's a nonfiction book, you don't have to read everything in order, you can skip around. All right, so you can point these things out, ask them questions, comments about it. Let's look at the middle of the book. This is when we really get into some things. You do not have to ask these questions in order, but I'm gonna go through a few of these so you can kind of get a feel for it. And there, there are tons of other questions that you can ask. These are just examples to help you get in the right mindset. Um, you can ask your child before you turn to the next page, ask them a question or two. Why did that happen? What do you think is going to happen next? Another thing you can use is to uh, use voices for the dialogue. If it's a wicked person, a villain or something, you may decide to change your voice to be a mean voice. Maybe it's sharp pitch like a wicked witch. Maybe it's something that is deeper. And if you think that even some of your older elementary children would not be enchanted by that, you are incredibly mistaken. If you've listened to audiobooks before, then you know voices do matter and it helps. And you may not be a pro at it, but your child won't know that. 
Okay. And, and even if you're not and your child notices something, you just laugh about it. Okay. Um, you can also ask your child if something happens, how would that make you feel? And if your child is not used to discussing this stuff, you can say, go ahead and model for them. Well, I would feel this way. What does that remind you of? And then you can lead it and say, well, this is what it reminds me of. What does it remind you of? Um, we use this one a lot. If I read something aloud to my kids and I'm pretty sure that this particular word is not in their speaking vocabulary, as in they don't use it when they talk, then I also wonder, okay, well, is it in their listening vocabulary? Do they understand what someone means when they use that word? So this is how I find out. I'll read something and then I get to the end of the paragraph and I'll be like, okay, listen to this. Do you know what this word means? I'm going to read the sentence again. What does this word mean? And they might use the context of what is being read to get a feel for it. And they might not know. And then we can discuss it. You can show your finger when move when you read the words. Now, this is mainly for early readers, but it's a good thing to do. Some people's children learn to read just by watching their parent read the book and watching their fingers move along. You can reread confusing parts and share your thoughts. Okay, have you ever been reading a book or maybe something else, some other kind of material, and then you find yourself wondering, what was that that I just read? Did I understand that right? Something didn't sound correct. So you might want to ask yourself that out loud because you're thinking aloud for your child and telling your child, okay, it's okay to go back. Let's go back and reread this part. You can also ask your child, how do you think that character feels? And this helps to develop some kind of uh, empathy with the character. I, I did not know that. Did you? If you're reading a nonfiction book and they, they give you a really cool fact, maybe it's a really gross fact. We've seen some of those in some books. And you can share that with your child. You could also say, uh, would you like to go there? Uh, would you like to be that animal? Why? Why not? As you're finding out different things in nonfiction books. So it's not only chapter books. You can do this with nonfiction books. Now, let's move on to the end. As you reflect on a book, you can ask yourself, what did you like or what did you not like about this book? You can have your child retell the story. Can they tell it in order? Do they remember details about where the setting of the story was? When it took place, the names of the people, what happened? Oh, so much is learned from conversation. And if you work with your child one-on-one -on -one, or even in a small group, you and your children together, they're going to learn so much that it would have taken them much longer to learn had they done a worksheet on it. Okay, and you can invite your child to reread that book later. You know, we just finished The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I had read that to my oldest son when he was only in second or third grade. I read it aloud to him. Well, now it was in some of his assigned reading uh, and he's in seventh grade now. And so, yeah, it was pretty easy read for him. You know, he read it easily within the week, but he had to do different writing assignments based on that book. So it's OK for kids to go back and reread a book later that you have read to them. That's my point. Okay, you can draw or write about your favorite part in the book. Remember book reports growing up? I hope you didn't have boring book reports where you just, you know, fill out a paper. There's lots of ways that you can have your child reflect on a book that they've read. Uh, making a drawing or painting or something similar. Making a craft from the book. Something that they can do at the end. They can even take a plain sheet of paper and fold it like it's a little brochure and decorate it say what they did like about the book, what they didn't like about the book. You know, we did this a few years ago with the book Witches. And my son took a lot of time to make sure he had, you know, he wanted to draw a picture of that witch, you know, as ugly as he could draw her and write about some of the things that happened in the book. You can also ask your child, what lesson did the character learn in the story? Um, and you can end on a good note, stay positive, even if it's not your child's favorite book. But if it is a book they enjoy, take note of that author. You might want to read some other material from that author. Now, remember that you don't have to finish the book or even an entire chapter just when you sit down one evening to do this. Some books have longer chapters and that's why bookmarks are made. If your child is tired and they're not feeling it the rest of the night, it's okay to go 
end at a spot. Sometimes I like to end at a suspenseful spot. So my child wants to read more later when we sit down. Okay, so I hope that helped you out. If you head over to the Parent Teacher Bridge, you can get a copy of this Reading Handy Helper. And that is what it looks like. But it also comes with a couple of additional pages. Let me show you those to you. Let me show you. It also comes with a couple of additional pages. Let me show you those. Um, it's never too early or too late to start reading aloud. I list out the benefits of reading aloud to your child, and I've made videos on this too, but those are just good to go back and revisit from time to time. Here are some things to remember before you leave, and here is it explained for you. So for anybody who didn't watch my video just now, you can look and see the beginning expounded upon, the middle, and remember you don't have to ask every question all the time. And then the ending, reflect on the lessons, events, facts, and your review of the book. So that is the Read Aloud Handy Helper. Be sure to get yourself a copy. I hope this helped you. If I've helped you in any way, please head over to my Facebook page, the Parent Teacher Bridge on Facebook, and leave a review. I know some of you out there I've consulted with, some of you out there I've tutored your child, or I've just spoken to you as a friend. I'm trying to get my reviews built up over there. So if you don't mind, uh, give that a minute or two to do that. Be sure you like and subscribe. Leave any comment down below. And remember, if you have a question, you can email me, Rebecca at the Parent Teacher Bridge .com. I read all these emails and I'm happy to respond to you or even do a video if you have a particular request. Remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.